Hello and welcome to Newsday on the BBC. I'm Sharon Jitlail in Singapore. The headlines. I'm Kasia Madeira in London. Also in this program. Good morning. It's 8 a.m. here in Singapore, 1 a.m. in London and 8 p.m. in New York, where on Friday, one of President Kim Jong-un's closest aides will hand deliver a letter from the North Korean leader to President Donald Trump. It'll be another step in facilitating an historic summit due to take place right here in Singapore. From New York, the BBC's Nick Bryant has been following developments. So quite an optimistic outlook about that potential U.S.-North Korean summit going ahead. But within the last few hours, North Korea's state news agency said that the, Korea, the country's leader, Kim Jong-un, has agreed to hold a summit with Russia. Now, that announcement followed a visit to North Korea by the Russian Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov. A little earlier, I was able to speak to our State Department correspondent, Barbara Pletasha, and I asked her how the U.S. will react to this announcement. I'm quite expect about what is going to be in the letter that the North... Barbara Pletasha there in New York. Well, that meeting, that potential summit with North Korea is not the only thing that is preoccupying the U.S. president because President Trump has made good on a campaign promise by slapping hefty tariffs on imports of steel and also aluminium. We were always expecting that, but the countries, the list of countries that the president has targeted with these tariffs have caused quite a stir. The allies include the EU, Canada and Mexico. They are all on that list and they've been quick to promise a retaliatory measure. Here's what the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau had to say. Uh, the American administration Justin Trudeau. We're also making news today. Italy looks like it is finally about to get a new... Now, the threat from volcanic eruptions on Hawaii's Big Island simply show no signs of easing. These pictures show lava spewing to around 60 metres up into the air. And as you can see, this fast-moving molten stream from Kilauea volcano is cutting a path through just about everything that it is coming across. These latest eruptions have forced more people from their homes. Now, defence ministers from across the world are gathering here in Singapore this weekend for the International Institute for Strategic Studies Shangri-La Dialogue as the region's leading security and defence summit. Correspondent Karishma Vaswani caught up with the Tim Huxley, who's the executive director of the IIS, and asked him what the US's priorities in the region are. And that was Karishma Vaswani speaking to Tim Huxley there. Well, you're watching Newsday on the BBC, still to come on the programme. Welcome back. You're watching Newsday on the BBC. I'm Sharon Jitlail in Singapore. And I'm Kasia Madeira in London. Our top stories on... Let's take a look now at some of the front pages from around the world. We could start with the Financial Times, which is leading with the trade war we reported on earlier uh, with the uh, uh, EU, Canada and uh, Mexico. Of course, it's headline reading that the US fires the first shots in trade war with its allies. And uh, we'll probably see a tit-for-tat round of tariffs over the new tax on steel and aluminium imports. Over to Japan now, where the Japan Times is focusing on those high-level talks between the U.S. Secretary of State and senior uh, North Korean officials. And uh, there's a picture of Mike Pompeo. He's showing uh, the North Koreans the view in New York. And uh, finally, the New York Times has a story about a search and rescue mission for a wooden boat carrying Rohingya refugees. Its front page is dominated by this uh, picture, this photo of uh, a search in international waters off the Andaman Sea. The refugees were trying to reach Malaysia but were reportedly intercepted by Myanmar authorities. Well, that brings you up to date with some of the uh, papers. Kasia, what are the stories sparking discussions online? Well, Sharon Jake, there's still a lot of shock online about that surprise announcement by... Now, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has arrived in Singapore on a three-day visit at the invitation of Singapore's Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong. Before arriving here, he's been in Malaysia where he met his newly elected counterpart, Mahathir Mohamad. And before that, he was in Indonesia where both countries signed a number of pacts to enhance trade ties. Well, Subramanya Jayashenka is the former Foreign Secretary of India. He joined me here in the studio earlier. I asked him what Prime Minister Modi hoped to achieve on his visit. That uh, India is playing a much more strategic role in uh, the region. He's uh, the Prime Minister is due to give a speech on this uh, mm -hmm. later today. Mm -hmm. But uh, how much is India now playing a somewhat supportive role to the U.S. to sort of counter that rise in China, particularly when the U.S. is starting to use language like the Indo-Pacific. 
uh, could tell us a little bit about uh, what he is due to talk about in this sort of strategic speech that he is due to deliver at the Shangri-La Dialogue, which is well, a, uh, a meeting of very high-level defence chiefs. The former Foreign Secretary of India speaking to Sharanjit a little bit earlier. Now, it may come as a surprise to hear that New Zealand has the worst teenage suicide rate in the developed world. Just last year, 155 teenagers killed themselves. Well, stand-up comedian Mike King has used comedy all his life to hide his own problems with drugs, alcohol and mental health. Now, Mike is leading a movement to change the way that depression is dealt with. The comedian Mike King there with an important message. Now, for a time, it was one of the world's most famous beaches, a secluded bay in Thailand, which featured in the film The Beach. Well, it's now been closed by the authorities to protect it from environmental damage. The thousands of tourists who flocked to Maya Bay are now threatening the coral and marine life around it. Steve Holden from the BBC's Newsbeat reports. Still a stunning beach. Well, you've been watching Newsday. Stay with us, because coming up, we'll be taking a more in-depth look and if you were watching yesterday's programme, you'll remember some images that we showed you of the world's 